Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Bible Breakdown Podcast with your host, Pastor Brandon. Today, Hebrews chapter 10. Today's title is Jesus is Better, So We Enter Boldly. Jesus is Better, So We Enter Boldly. Boldly. We're going to talk about what that means and maybe one of the most powerful scriptures in all of Hebrews today. But before we get into that, make sure if you are joining us that you are subscribed to our YouTube channel. Make sure that you like, share, and subscribe. Also, make sure you go and leave us a five star review on the podcast. You can go to Apple Podcasts and do that. Also, we've added this new feature where you can comment on the episodes on Spotify. And so we'd love to hear from you if you have any questions, have any comments, concerns, angry outbursts. We want to hear all of it. Make sure you're letting us know how you are engaging with God's Word. And we all gather together at the Bible Breakdown Discussion on Facebook. They're doing an amazing job over there. And man, the more we dig, the more we find. And it's an honor to do life together. Well, if you have your Bibles, want to open up with me to Hebrews chapter 10. Remember, the overall theme of Hebrews is Jesus is better. And the writer of Hebrews has been building this case throughout the first nine chapters and now into chapter 10 about the Old Testament sacrifices were an illustration of what was going to come and now fulfilled through Jesus. And what I love about this is that now he is going to begin to say, because of what Jesus has done, this is what we can do. This, this is the celebration point of Hebrews, uh, the whole thing. So we're going to read this, and then at the end, we're going to wrap it up. And man, just some of the most powerful verses this up to this point in Hebrews is going to be in today's chapter. So if you're ready, let's read this together. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 1 says this, The old system under the law of Moses was only a shadow, a dim preview of the good things to come, not the good things themselves. The sacrifices under that system were repeated again and again, year after year, but they were never able to provide perfect cleansing for those who came to worship. If they could have provided perfect cleansing, the sacrifices would have stopped, for the worshipers would have been purified once for all time, and their feelings of guilt would have disappeared. But instead, those sacrifices actually reminded them of their sins year after year. For it is not possible for the blood of bulls and goats to take away sins. That is why when Christ came into the world, he said to God, You did not want animal sacrifices or sin offerings, but you have given them a body to offer. You are not pleased with burnt offerings or other offerings for sin. Then I said, Look, I have come to do your will, O God, as it is written about me in the scriptures. This, by, by the way, was from Psalm chapter 40, and it was a Messianic prophecy. Verse 8, first, Christ said, you did not want animal sacrifices or sin offerings or burnt offerings or other offerings for sin, nor were you pleased with them, though they are required by the law of Moses. Then he said, look, I have come to do your will. He cancels the first covenant in order to put the second into effect. For God's will was for us to be made holy by the sacrifice of the body of Jesus Christ once for all time. In other words, Jesus' work on the cross one time was good for everybody, those who were alive then and those who would be alive one day, which is me and you, right? Verse 11, under the old covenant, the priest stands and ministers before the altar day after day, offering the same sacrifices again and again, which can never take away sins, but... Our high priest offered himself to God as a single sacrifice for sins, good for all time. Then he sat down in the place of honor at God's right hand. There he waits for his enemies to be humbled and made a footstool under his feet. For by that one offering he made forever, uh, he forever made perfect those who are made holy. And the Holy Spirit also testifies that this is so. For he says, this is the new covenant I will make with my people on that day, says the Lord. I will put my laws in their hearts and I will write them on their minds. Then he says, I will never again remember their sins and their lawless deeds. And when sins have been forgiven, there is no need to offer any more sacrifices. In other words, once Jesus has washed away your sins, you don't have to go back and keep asking him to forgive you again. Now, many times after he has forgiven us of our sins, the enemy will come in and will try to remind you of what you did. But that's the enemy and that's spiritual warfare. You never have to ask forgiveness from God twice. 
Once is always enough. And that's a beautiful thing. All right, verse 19. So, dear brothers and sisters, I love this. We can boldly enter heaven's most holy place because of the blood of Jesus. By his death, Jesus opened the new and life-giving way through the curtain into the most holy place. And since we have a great high priest who rules over God's house, let us go right into the presence of God with sincere hearts, fully trusting him. For our guilty consciences have been sprinkled with Christ's blood to make us clean, and our bodies have been washed with pure water. Let us hold tightly without wavering to the hope we affirm, for God can be trusted to keep his promise. That's awesome. Verse 24, let us think of ways to motivate one another to acts of love and good works. And let us not neglect our meeting together as some people do, but encourage one another, especially now that the day of his turn return is drawing near. Now pause. That is one of the verses that people use to remind us to make sure we're joining together in Christian community. If you ever talk to someone who says, well, I don't really believe in going to church. Well, if that's true, that means they don't really believe in the Bible because the Bible just says, let us not neglect meeting together. Now, is the church the only place we can meet together? Of course not. But it is one of the primary ways throughout history we have met together. So it's, it's one thing for someone to say, I don't like going to that church or that church. But if they just say, I don't like going to meet with God's people, then you need to read Hebrews chapter 10 because <laughs> Hebrews chapter 10 says we should actually motivate one another to do acts of love and to not neglect meeting together, but encourage each other. So we meet together to motivate and encourage and instruct one another. And so it's important that God's people gather together, if for no other reason, because the Bible says so. All right, verse 26. Dear friends, if we deliberately continue sinning after we have received the knowledge of the truth, there is no longer any sacrifice that will cover these sins. There is only the... There is only the terrible expectation of God's judgment and the raging fire that will consume his enemies. For anyone who refuses to obey the law of Moses was put to death without mercy on the testimony of two or three witnesses. Just think of how much worse the punishment will be for those who have trampled on the Son of God and have treated the blood of the covenant, which was made, has made us holy, if it were common and unholy and have insulted and disdained the Holy Spirit who brings God's mercy to us. For we know the one who said, I will take revenge, I will pay them back. He also said, the Lord will judge his own people. It is a terrible thing to fall into the hands of a living God. Think back on those early days when you first learned about Christ. Remember how you remained faithful, even though it meant terrible suffering. Sometimes you were exposed to public ridicule and were beaten, and sometimes you were helped, you helped others who were suffering the same things. You suffered along with those who were thrown into jail, and when all you owe owned was taken from you, you accepted it with joy. You, uh, you knew there was a better thing waiting for you that will last forever. So don't throw away this confident trust in the Lord. Remember the great reward it brings you. Patient endurance is what you need now so that you will continue to do God's will. Then you will receive all that he has promised. For in just a little while, the coming one will come and not delay. And my righteous ones will live by faith. But I will take no pleasure in anyone who turns away. But we are not like those who turn away from God and to their own destruction. We are the faithful ones whose souls will be saved. Wow, what an amazing promise that says if we hold on, God will be faithful. That doesn't mean we go through seasons when we would like to do better and seasons when things get hard, but it's just saying that we never let go of trusting and believing that God is for us. And what the writer was saying is, is he was saying because of what Christ has done, now we have access to God's presence. Do you know the Bible says in the New Testament that in, even in the time of Jesus, you had the temple set up that was set up extremely similar to the, the tabernacle. You had the outer court, you had the inner court, then you had this massive curtain that separated the holy place from the most holy place, and that separated people from the presence of God. Well, when Jesus died on the cross, the Bible says that an earthquake happened, and it split that curtain in two, showing what was inside the inner court. And it was a symbol that now what Jesus had done had destroyed 
that separation between God and man, and now we could enter into the throne of God. And you know what that means? That means that when you want to talk to God, you don't have to go to a priest. You don't have to come to your pastor. You don't have to do any of those things. If you want to talk to God, all you have to do is just whisper the name of Jesus. God's even closer than that. If you can't even get it out of your mouth, all you can do is in your mind call on God. He is there because of what Christ has done. So I want to ask you this question. If you knew that God could hear you, if you knew that nothing in your life could separate you from the love of God, and if you knew that Jesus was one whisper away, what would you tell him? What would you talk about? What would you share with the Lord? If you knew that you've never been more loved than you are right now, and the very God who didn't just shout his love to you from heaven, but he came on a rescue mission, he walked among us for 33 years, died on a cross, rose again, went and purified the things of heaven, and now stands at the right hand of his Father, the divine, co-equal, co-eternal trinity, Father, Son, and Spirit right there, and he is looking on you with eyes of love and eyes of forgiveness. If that God says, come see me, come talk to me, I'm as close as a thought. If that God were truly listening, and he is, what would you say to him? Would you tell him your deepest heart's desire? Would you tell him the things that you don't tell anyone else? Would you share with him the celebrations that you don't think anybody else cares about? What would you tell him? Well, in just a moment, I'm going to pray for us, and we're going to end our podcast. And I wonder if you have just a moment. Would you take a moment and talk to the Lord? Tell him a few of those things. Tell him what's going on in your heart and in your mind. Maybe, maybe celebrate a few things. Maybe, maybe complain about a few things. Maybe talk about some of the heavy things in your life. But just take just a few moments and imagine that the king of the universe has, you have his complete attention. And he wants to know what's going on. Because he does. Let's pray together right now. God, thank you so much. The Lord, you have the ability somehow in your eternal existence to fully focus on me on everyone listening, on everyone who will listen in the future, but you're not limited in any way. So right now, you are fully attentive to everyone who is listening or watching this podcast. I pray, Holy Spirit, you will open our eyes to see just how very loved and seen, significant, accepted, and secure we all are. And Lord, as we end this podcast, I pray that you will give us a moment just of honesty, to maybe share our hearts with you, to share our, share some pains with you, to share some celebrations with you, and just to realize, God, that you are our Heavenly Father. You want to know what's going on in our life. And we celebrate you right now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Anyway, well, God's Word says in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1, let us strip off every weight that slows us down, especially the sin that so easily trips us up, and let us run with endurance the race God has set before us. We do this by keeping our eyes on Jesus. He is the author and the perfecter of our faith. I love you. I'll see you tomorrow for one of the most famous chapters of the Bible, Hebrews chapter 11.